At 9.43 this morning, seismic alarms registered ground movement in California faster than anything ever caught on official record, with cracks opening across miles and entire neighborhoods at risk. Experts are racing to analyze strange, deep mined rock samples and cannot agree. If this is a routine tremor or the first evidence of a fault line splitting the state in two. The next few minutes could upend everything we thought we knew about California's stability. Is the threat as real as the panic suggests? At exactly 9.43, a spike appeared on the seismograph feed from Station CY1124, just east of the Sierra foothills. The raw trace shot upward, registering an amplitude that dwarfed the usual background noise. It was far outside the typical range for the region. For decades, California's seismic monitors have tracked faults creeping along at a steady pace, usually measuring movement in millimeters per year. Today's data told a different story. The ground was shifting in centimeters per hour, dozens of times faster than the slow, silent drift most geologists expect. Alarms sounded across the California Integrated Seismic Network. Automated systems flagged the event for manual review, comparing the waveform's jagged peaks and rapid oscillations against decades of archived tremor patterns. The signature did not match any known event from the San Andreas Hayward or the more restless Calaveras segment. Instead, the spike showed a burst of energy that seemed to come from deeper in the crust. With a frequency and amplitude combination that left analysts scanning for equipment errors. Redundancy checks confirmed the readings. At three separate stations spread across the eastern valleys, the same pattern repeated. A sudden, sharp displacement followed by a string of aftershocks pulsing through the network at irregular intervals. These were not the slow, rolling waves of a distant quake, nor the subtle creep of a known fault zone. The raw data showed a wall of motion, as if the Earth itself had lurched forward in a single, violent instant. For the scientists monitoring these feeds, the numbers alone demanded immediate attention. When movement rates leap from fractions of a millimeter per year to centimeters per hour, every protocol shifts from routine analysis to urgent investigation. No one could say yet what was driving the anomaly. The instruments left no doubt. Something beneath California was moving in ways it had never moved before. By mid-morning, a convoy of field geologists arrived at the coordinates flagged by the seismic network. The lead investigator, Dr. Lena Morales, stepped out onto ground that had been undisturbed for generations. What she found was a jagged crack slicing through the dry grass, running straight across the valley floor. The rupture stretched for nearly two miles, with sections where the earth had pulled apart by more than one foot. GPS devices logged offset measurements at regular intervals, confirming that the ground had shifted laterally and vertically. In some places, fence posts leaned at awkward angles, their bases split by the fresh gap. Asphalt on a nearby farm road buckled, leaving a sharp ridge that stopped a pickup truck in its tracks. Dr. Morales and her team moved methodically along the rupture, marking positions and recording widths with laser rangefinders. The widest separation measured 37 centimeters, far beyond the typical surface creep seen along older faults in the region. They mapped the crack's path with handheld GPS units, tracking its progress as it zigzagged through fields and under a line of transmission towers. At several points, the team found evidence of sheared roots and broken irrigation pipes, each a marker of the ground's sudden movement. The team collected soil and rock samples from both sides of the fault trace, bagging them for later analysis. Each sample location was photographed and cataloged, building a detailed record of the rupture's physical characteristics. Their data would soon be compared against satellite imagery and seismic profiles, but the evidence on the ground was already clear. A new break had appeared, cutting through the landscape with a force and speed that defied the slow motion changes most Californians expect. For Dr. Morales, the implications were immediate. This was not a subtle shift, but a dramatic reminder of the forces still shaping California's terrain.
Inside the laboratory, the first rock samples from the rupture zone arrive sealed and tagged, each marked with precise GPS coordinates and depth estimates. Lab analyst Dr. Rena Patel begins by examining thin sections under a polarizing microscope, searching for mineral clues that reveal both the origin and the pressure history of the rock. The grains display undulating extinction and subgrain boundaries, microstructures that, in tectonic rocks, often point to deformation deep below the surface. In several samples, Dr. Patel identifies high-pressure polymorphs of quartz, such as coesite, which only form at depths equivalent to at least 20 kilometers within the crust. These mineral phases act like time-stamped signatures of the forces that shape them. Using electron microprobe analysis, the team maps zones of recrystallized feldspar and traces of myelinite, a rock fabric produced by intense shearing. These patterns do not match the more common shallow fault gouge found in surface breaks along the San Andreas or Hayward faults. Instead, they suggest that the rupture accessed material from much deeper, possibly connecting to broader tectonic processes between the Pacific and North American plates. Still, the evidence isn't absolute. The lab's pressure and temperature estimates rely on mineral ratios that can be altered by later surface events or weathering. Some samples show ambiguous features, like partially healed fractures and mixed grain sizes, which complicate the story. Dr. Patel labels the findings as preliminary. The micro textures and mineral phases point toward a deep-seated origin. But without more data, it is impossible to say whether this fault represents a new pathway through the crust or a reactivation of older structures. As the results circulate among the scientific team, debate grows over what these rocks actually prove and what they leave unanswered about the forces now reshaping California's landscape. On the corner of Willow Avenue and East Ridge Road, cracks have begun to snake their way through the pavement splitting the street in uneven lines that were not there a week ago. Residents step carefully over the gaps, some wide enough to swallow a bicycle tire, others just hairline fractures that catch the morning light. Along Maple Street, the sidewalk has lifted almost three inches, pushing up against the roots of old sycamore trees. Mailboxes lean at odd angles, their concrete footing split clean through. For homeowners like Teresa and Gwen, a local community leader, the changes are impossible to ignore. She points to the fresh fissures running across her driveway and to the patchwork of repairs already attempted by city crews. She says they have lived here for 20 years and the ground has never moved like this. Every day there is something new, a crack in the wall, a door that will not close, a sound at night that makes you wonder if the house is shifting again. City engineers have logged dozens of service calls in just the past week, with repair estimates climbing as new reports come in. On Oakdale Lane, utility workers mark the pavement with bright spray paint, tracing the path of a water main that now sits dangerously close to the shifting earth. Local businesses along Main Street worry about the foundation damage already visible in their basements, hairline splits in the concrete, shelves that no longer sit level. The school district has closed the east wing of Jefferson Elementary after discovering stress fractures in the gymnasium support columns. For families and business owners, the damage is not abstract. It is a daily reminder that the ground beneath their lives is no longer reliable, and no one can say when or if it will settle again. Interstate 80 runs like an artery across the high desert carrying freight and families between Reno and Sacramento. Along its route, the pavement crosses a web of mapped and unmapped faults, some known for decades, others only recently added to state databases. Underneath, the California aqueduct and a network of natural gas pipelines trace similar paths, carrying water and energy across the state. On paper, these corridors are inspected on a rolling schedule. Each utility assigned a unique identifier and a set of maintenance deadlines. In practice, delays are common. 
a 2025 audit of pipeline inspections in Eastern California showed a backlog of more than 18 months for several segments near the Walker Lane Zone. Highway engineers flagged expansion joints on bridges for review, but funding shortfalls meant some checks were postponed until the next fiscal year. Emergency planning officials face a daunting calculus. One local official speaking under the pressure of mounting service requests describes the challenge. We have critical infrastructure crossing active ground, and we are prioritizing based on the last known inspection date, not the current risk. Utility maps show the aqueduct intersecting the suspected fault trace at three separate points, while fiber optic cables and regional power lines run parallel for miles. Each crossing represents a potential weak spot. If the ground shifts, even by a few centimeters, a buried pipeline can shear or buckle, and a highway can fracture without warning. The risk is not limited to a single system. A rupture in one corridor can cascade, knocking out water, power, and transportation in a chain reaction that leaves communities isolated. For now, officials are triaging inspections, hoping to catch the most vulnerable segments before the next surprise arrives. Inside a crowded university conference room, two seismologists face a wall of data that refuses to provide easy answers. Dr. Samuel Lee, a specialist in tectonic modeling, scrolls through GPS velocity maps and points to the Eastern Sierra, where the Walker Lane Shear Zone absorbs a quarter of the Pacific and North American plate's relative motion. For Lee, the evidence supports a long-standing theory. Strain is gradually migrating east, setting the stage for a future plate boundary that could, over millions of years, redraw California's geography. He highlights paleoseismic trench records from the region. Ancient surface ruptures spaced thousands of years apart, each one a reminder that the ground here has split before, though never on a timeline that matches today's urgency. Across the table, Dr. Maria Contreras, an expert in seismic hazards, argues for caution. She points to gaps in the monitoring network, especially across the sparsely instrumented valleys and ranges that make up much of Eastern California and Western Nevada. While the San Andreas is mapped in detail, Walker Lane's faults are diffuse, broken into short segments separated by broad stretches of quiet ground. Contreras warns that without dense GPS arrays and continuous INSAR coverage, it is, an insalvers, it is impossible to confirm whether recent tremors are isolated incidents or part of a larger, unfolding process. She references the absence of peer-reviewed studies confirming a new through going fault and notes how preliminary data can mislead especially when atmospheric noise or equipment drift mimic tectonic signals. Lee counters with historical analogs, citing the 1872 Owens Valley earthquake, a magnitude 7.4 rupture that left a scar more than 100 kilometers long. He points to sediment cores pulled from ancient lake beds, where turbidite layers suggest powerful shaking events have reverberated through this region for millennia. These records, he says, imply that major fault reorganization is possible, even if the process unfolds in fits and starts, rather than a single catastrophic break. Contreras shifts the discussion to public safety. She reminds the group that actionable decisions depend on more than just tectonic models. Without clear, reproducible evidence of a new fault's geometry and behavior, Evacuation orders or infrastructure shutdowns could do more harm than good. She calls for a measured response, deploy portable seismic stations, commission high-resolution trenching studies, and prioritize peer-reviewed mapping before making sweeping policy changes. The debate grows sharper as both sides acknowledge the stakes, a region home to millions, with highways, aqueducts, and power lines running across, across ground that might or might not be preparing to move. Outside the conference room, the uncertainty lingers. The Walker Lane remains under-monitored, its true potential debated in academic journals and emergency planning meetings alike. With no consensus on the fault's next move, officials must weigh the risks 
of waiting against the dangers of acting on incomplete information. For now, the only certainty is the gap between what scientists know and what they still need to find out. A coordinated checklist now guides the response, translating scientific uncertainty into concrete steps for agencies and communities. The first priority is expanding the seismic monitoring network. Portable seismographs, GPS receivers, and INSAR ground stations are scheduled for deployment along suspected fault traces within the next several weeks. These instruments will record even the smallest ground shifts, building a real-time map of how stress is distributed across, across the region. Data from these sensors will feed directly into the California Integrated Seismic Network, providing updates that emergency managers and scientists can review daily. Inspection teams are dispatched to survey infrastructure that intersects the fault zone. Highway engineers begin with bridges and overpasses along Interstate 80, focusing on expansion joints and support columns that could be vulnerable to sudden movement. Utility companies accelerate their own checks, sending crews to inspect water pipelines, natural gas lines, and electrical substations. Each inspection is logged with GPS coordinates, photographs, and status reports, creating a living database of risk points across the state. Maintenance schedules are updated to reflect the new priorities, with high-risk segments moved to the top of the list. In some cases, temporary shutoffs or rerouting plans are drafted in case further displacement threatens critical service lines. Local governments receive updated emergency templates for evacuation and shelter-in-place protocols. These plans are tailored to the unique geography of each community, taking into account the proximity of schools, hospitals, and care facilities to the mapped fault traces. Drills are scheduled for the coming month, with public notices posted online and at community centers. Residents are encouraged to review their own preparedness, checking emergency kits, securing heavy furniture, and identifying safe spots in their homes. For businesses, continuity plans are revised to address the possibility of service interruptions or road closures. Insurance providers circulate updated risk assessments, prompting policy reviews in high exposure areas. State and federal agencies collaborate on contingency planning for cascading failures. Emergency operation centers run tabletop exercises simulating scenarios where multiple infrastructure systems fail at once. These exercises test communication protocols, resource allocation, and mutual aid agreements between counties. The California Office of Emergency Services coordinates with USGS and FEMA to ensure that early warning systems are integrated with local alert networks. In the event of a major rupture, automated alerts will notify residents via text, radio, and siren systems, buying precious seconds for people to take protective action. Throughout this process, timelines are measured in weeks and months, not years. Each step is tracked against a living checklist, instrument deployment, inspection milestones, community outreach, and emergency drills. The goal is to stay ahead of the next surprise using every available tool to monitor, prepare, and respond. The checklist is not a guarantee of safety, but it is a framework for action in a landscape where the ground itself is an unpredictable variable. Today, seismic uncertainty remains California's most persistent fault line. With more than 39 million lives and the world's fifth largest economy at stake, even unverified threats demand vigilance. Science moves carefully, but nature won't wait for consensus. The ground beneath us is never as settled as we hope. What would you do if the warning came tomorrow? 